Penny. Good morning. How are you? How's it going, Daniel? Good morning. Good. I wanted to ask if there's any uh, update on DeAndre and then also on Ahmad. Do you have a timetable for his return to practice and, and to games possibly? Ahmad's return was today. He returned to practice today. So that's a, that's a great sight for us. DeAndre, I think we have to wait until Friday. It's been very frustrating with that because DeAndre has been practicing with us the entire time. And he's a humongous part when he when he's eligible and I'm speaking into existence, people will see how important he is for our team. And he's been a big piece of that. So definitely waiting on him to get eligible. Terry. What's up, coach? What's up, Terry? Hey, man, uh, there's been uh, what, what how do you fix your offense? Well, it just come with time and chemistry build with it. And also, do you expect any uh, uh, lineup changes for starting? Well, you know what? In the first game. Offense worked perfectly against St. Mary's. Against Western Kentucky, kind of got a little selfish and just wasn't making the extra pass. There were people open. We just weren't willing to make the next pass. And against VCU, they took us out of our offense. They did an unbelievable job of just scrapping, overplaying things, trapping a uh, pick and roll. And it came down to decision making. And we just didn't make the right decision. So the offense itself, we've kind of, I've kind of gone back to what I've done before uh, and kind of made everything much easier for the guys. But it's, it's more on the defensive end of what we really want to do and how we want to play the game and what we want to want to be known for. And uh, we're probably going to make changes tomorrow. We don't know um, exactly right now, but there will be changes tomorrow. I'll have it before the game, for sure. Cassie? Good morning, Coach. You said after the VCU game that the tournament was beneficial because you feel like you know who your team is now. So what do you feel like you have with this team and who do you think they are? Well, I knew what we had before we went to the tournament. We went to the tournament unified. We went to the tournament ready to play as a team. And it's it just to be as real as I can be, man. When these kids get on national TV, things change. You know, it becomes individualized. I think the kids think that if they get off and that puts them one step closer to their dream. And when you're on, when you recruit the way that we recruit, you're going to get guys that want to be one and done. And sometimes the chemistry is off. And I'm sure everybody notices the selfish play on the offensive end. And that's not what we preach. We're always been a team to be one more pass, get the next pass to your teammate, make the right play. And we just stopped doing that, uh, the better that the games got. And uh, we came back home and just, you know, said we cannot play that way. We're one and two when we shouldn't be one and two. Uh, I'm taking ownership for all of that, and I'm correcting it as we go. Mitch. Coach, uh, two questions for you. How's practice been this week? And can you talk about the scheduling on the fly that uh, you had to do Friday night for Central Arkansas and like everybody else has done in college basketball? I know Mike Bray was actually looking for a game for Saturday. And a lot of fans on Twitter before that VCU game wanted Memphis to play Notre Dame. Oh, really? Well, yeah, that was, you know, first of all, you know, scheduling – is has been like really weird because we didn't know if we were going to go to South Dakota because all the teams were dropping out. Even though we stayed steady and didn't pull out, we just didn't know if the tournament was going to continue. And when you get there uh, with everything that's going on, it, it was just, you know, we first, we didn't go with our whole team. So teams are going to have to travel without their guys sometimes probably. You didn't have your whole team. And then you get into a tournament where you have really good teams. The mid-major teams that were there were really, Western Kentucky, nothing but respect. BCU, nothing but respect. So those teams were tough, and you got to go out there and battle against those teams with all that, with everything that's going on. And we ended up losing two games, so it was very frustrating. But it was something that we wanted to do to kind of figure out what we were. And um, you know, putting that Central Arkansas game together at the last minute was something that we needed. We needed we needed more games before we, uh, you know, to try to get to our 17. You got to get to 17 games, and um, you know that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to schedule as many games. That we could we didn't want to go uh blank whoever wanted to play us we wanted to play and if it would have had to happen against notre dame hey so well we, we would have loved to play notre dame we just want to get games in and keep playing mike Good morning penny um just real quick you you uh you just talked about deandre and you said might know by friday is that you being hopeful or are you getting some sense that friday may be decision day on deandre well, we've gotten a small sense from the compliance department that Friday might be the day that they make the decision uh, on DeAndre. And uh, we're just hoping that they do the right thing. And the other question I had, you know, when you guys left Sioux Falls, for lack of a better term, you were angry at the way things played out over these last couple of days. What's been the mindset of the team as you get ready to play at home tomorrow? Well, the mindset of the team is that, first of all, we had to admit 
that we weren't, we didn't go and play the right way. You know, that's one thing that I'm trying to build here is a culture of playing the game the right way and playing for your brother. And we all had to admit that there wasn't the way that we wanted to represent ourselves and none of us are losers. So of course, you know, I got no sleep um, because those are games, those are winnable games that you need to win, but only if you're together. The talent alone isn't enough. I think that's what we understand. So the practices this week has been extremely hard. The guys have been unified. The guys have been together. And uh, that tournament was meant for us to get better. Whether we went 3-0, and 0-3, or 1-2, or 2-1, and 2 and 1, whatever. And we did get better from it. And you'll, you'll see the difference tomorrow night. Clayton? Coach, just on that note, I mean, how excited are you? How, you know, what, what is the feel like around the team kind of going into your first home game since March 5th? Everybody's a little, you know, anxious and angry, you know, ready to get to the next game to prove that we can play together on both ends of the floor. Like we said, we, we feel embarrassed, man. I, I coach this team hard. Uh, we, we, we hold each other accountable. We hold them accountable. They know the do's and don'ts. Um, and to go out there and play that way, nobody's happy about it. So we're excited to get to the game tomorrow. Will it be good at least to just be back in FedEx Forum, like kind of, you know, getting back to your home? It will be, you know, just to have our fans to be on our home court, but even more than that, to get to the next game so that we can just get the ball rolling. We, we were ready for another game the next day to just prove to ourselves that we know that we were better than what we displayed for sure. Terry. Hey coach, in the third game, uh, was it a matter of fatigue or the, uh, doing that third game in the tournament or they just didn't do what you wanted them to do? And how can you improve that going forward? Well, it was about to us. You know, VCU just took it to us, man. They just, we knew what they were going to do going into the game. They make you play for 40 minutes. And if you come out and play selfish or if you're coming out and not playing, not doing your defensive assignments, I mean, you're going to get the result that we got. And I, I talked about it before the game, being the toughest team. We, didn't need, we did not need to go one and two. We were one and one, and we had an opportunity to do something about it. And we went out and did not play the right way, man. I, I, like I said, I have to take credit for that, even though we don't teach that. I've corrected the mistakes. Guys are going to be held accountable for those actions immediately. You've never seen me be a guy that pulls the string on guys quickly, but if they're not doing what they're supposed to do now, the string is drawn. It's going to be pulled quickly, man. We cannot wait on guys to try to do the right thing because we've been taught to do, the th do things the right way. Jason? Hey, Penny, uh, how is recovery um, from a physical standpoint, just three games in three days, first three games of the year, how's recovery and – you, you had talked about um, making some changes. Uh, is, is, are any of the changes you're anticipating making um, because of, you know, injuries or recovery issues? Well, recovery was we had Saturday and Sunday off. So we gave the guys two full days off of recovery and rest. And then we got back to work on Monday. But the changes are happening because, one, guys are not just playing well. Uh, other guys are stepping up to the plate. And uh, we, need, we need to get the guys on the floor that are, that are producing. You know, this is not, no matter what anybody thinks, favoritism. What we do when we're in practice, we say whoever's playing the best, who's earning those minutes, are going to play. But if that's not carrying over into the games, but it's only happening in practice, then we got to go another route. So we're doing that right now. Anthony? Coach, how's it going? Doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, that was last season. That was like a recurring issue is where you, would, <clears throat> excuse me, you would have a game plan. You knew what the team, the opposing team would do. And then something happened where the game plan wasn't followed in the game. Why is that a recurring thing at the beginning of this season? Well, honestly, it's just the guys, man, this era, if you look around the country, man, I guarantee you every coach has the same argument when it comes to the kids. They remember what they want to remember and they do what they want to do. Now I just have to respond and the guys that aren't doing it, you got to snatch them out. Because when the game plan is set, there's no way for you to make an excuse. Because if you don't do the game plan, we're going to lose. So it's not just with us, it's with everybody. You put a game plan in, it's what's most, it's not what's the most important to the guys. I think their mind is more on offense and really trying to go out and get points, so to say, to justify themselves. But as a team, you go out and you think it's a game plan. And we just got to change the focus from being individualized and being about an individual uh, person and on the game plan and the team. You said that you wanted to go play in this tournament so you guys would know who you are. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Well, from that tournament, we were soft and we were selfish. And there's no way I'm going to have that. 
we're a representation of our city. We got a grit and grind city. Uh, my my style ever since I've been a coach has been hard nosed and getting in your face and pressing. And uh, I'm just getting back to me. We're not going to be that team. We're just not going to be that team. So things have changed in practice, and things have changed are going to change in, during the games. I remember during a press conference last year, I don't know what was said first, but you responded kind of jokingly saying, hey, bro, there's nothing soft about me. How do you transfer that mentality to the team? Well, in this area, in this era of, of, a, of a lot of kids that are feeling entitled, you just got to, it's playing time. If you don't do it right, you sit on the bench. That's the only way you can get to these kids. You can talk to your blue in the face. You can beg. You can put great game plans in. We teach harder than anybody. We develop more than anybody. But if you get in the game and then go against the game plan, then you come into the bench no matter who you are. This uh, During this COVID times, uh, games on the schedule are all pretty much tentative. You don't know what games you're going to actually play. Do you have a list of teams or coaches that you have relationships with that you've already talked to? Hey, in case these games get bumped off our schedule, would you be interested in uh, getting on the schedule so we can get to our 17 games? You know what? I think that's going to be a scramble because I have not done that. I don't know if a lot of guys have done that. I don't know if the games aren't going to be played. Like you said, everything is to be decided at the last minute, depending on what the COVID tests are uh, coming out of the testing for both teams. So I have not gone to that level where I've, I've called on friends and say, hey, if you can't play and the team that you're playing against has a COVID situation and then our team has a COVID situation, do you want to just play one another? Uh, I don't know how that will work, but we'll, we'll see. Last question. Uh how difficult was it to keep the team, the team isolated uh, to, for nobody to contract coronavirus in South Dakota with their numbers spiking so high? You know, it was very easy because at the hotel, there was no one allowed, not, not, not the maid service, not room service, no visitors. Everybody that was with the respective teams had to get tested every day or every other day, and they didn't allow anything in or anything out. So it was very easy for you when you went to your room, they had every, every team had their own room. You went to your room and you left your room uh, with your team. You went back to your hotel room and you never wandered in the lobby. There was never anybody just out, just hanging out. When everybody was done doing what they were supposed to do with film or eating their meals, you went back to your room. Thanks, Coach. Danielle? And when you said there's going to be some changes made in practice, can you elaborate on, on what those changes are? Well, we went from being an offensive-minded team and really focusing on 50-50 is 95% defense, 5% offense, because we'll create our offense on our defense. We've just switched it all the way up. I just went back to my East days, Team Penny days, Lester days, and that's how I've always taught, and I have to be true to myself. After, the, after that tournament, I cannot try to disguise this or disguise that I have to be who I am. And we're not going to lose another game without fighting, scrapping, energy, toughness. We'll never lose another game without, without that ever again. Mitch? Coach, can you talk a little bit about Arkansas State? What do you see on the uh, on the film, and what do you expect out of Arkansas State tomorrow night? Well, their best players guards, and that's something that we've been having a problem with, uh, even in the tournament in South Dakota. Those two guards are going to try to impose their will on our team um, offensively. They're going to run plays to get those guys the ball. The point guard is going to be aggressive. The shooting guard is the best player, and we know we have our, our hands cut out for us with those two guys, not disrespecting anybody else, but their guard-heavy team. And then defensively, they're going to play zone. So we got to create turnovers. We got to turn the heat up. We got to pressure. We got to get in their face. And we got to be ready for uh, nothing but energy from everybody that steps on that floor. Mike. Penny, you mentioned, um, you know, the home opener tomorrow. Uh, I know you're excited to be back, but just how weird is it going to be? It's not going to be your 17,000 standing room only at the forum. It's only how have you processed yet how different it's going to be tomorrow when you roll the ball out at the forum? Yeah, we well, you know just having the tournament in South Dakota kind of got us prepared for that because there were no fans in the stands at all. So we welcome coming back home and actually having some fans in the stands. So it was really weird uh, to try to motivate and keep going without seeing anybody in the arena. You got these little posters and these little pop-ups all over the seats to try to make it seem as if it was a crowd. But And then you got the Jumbotron and, uh, and things of that nature. But it's going to be a welcome uh, look for us tomorrow with our actual fans and, uh, and family in the, in the stands.
for you though, is it, do you, do you think the guys are a little excited because of everything that they've gone through to be able to go home, if you will, and play in their building? Yeah, everybody's ready to play in the forum. You know, even the guys that are new, they've never been in the forum. Today is our first day actually here to be able to practice in the forum the day before the game. So they're all excited out on the floor, dribbling the ball, shooting on the baskets, uh, and really excited for tomorrow's game. Terry? Hey, Coach, I know last year you gave your team a lot of rope offensively. I know you say you concentrate a lot on defense. Have you shortened that rope up any on, on the offensive end yet? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Because we took a ton of bad shots in uh, South Dakota. Bad shots are like turnovers, you know, and we've changed the offense up a little bit to where we're getting the ball in more scoring positions instead of always catching it outside the three-point line. So, like I said, I've kind of gone back to my roots, and uh, you'll see a difference. Anthony? Uh, Coach, from last, from the players that you had last year to this year, who do you uh, see being as the most improved? I, I can't really say one kid, honestly, that's been most improved. If I had to guess it, it probably would be Boogie because Boogie really didn't have a great season last year. But he's coming back in and he's shooting the ball. Uh, there's some other areas that he has to grow in. But last year he wasn't making shots and he was struggling in a lot of areas and he was frustrated. And uh, this year, I can just see the maturity in him. I can see that his 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 game is getting better, and um, you know that is that that will be one guy that I would say. How close is Malcolm to being a hundred percent? One of the first things I noticed when I saw him in the St. Mary's game, he's a lot quicker on his feet and he's slimmed down a lot. So I, yeah, yeah, you know, he's basically been looking forward to this season. There are many restrictions for his knees because he does still have some ailments. But uh, when he has energy, man, to me, there's no better big man in our conference because he's so skilled. Just unfortunate that he has those knee, knee pains and uh, it kind of prohibits him from just kind of going how he wants to go. But the minutes that he gives us uh, are definitely wanted and needed. What can we expect from Lance Thomas uh, this year? He seems to be like the ultimate teammate even in the game or not, he cheers for his teammates when they make plays and things like that. Uh, what can we expect from his play this year? Yeah, Lance is what you call a coach's dream when it comes to the team and out there on the court. Uh, whether he's on the court or not, he's always engaged. And that's what you want your team to be. You want your team to be engaged because when it's time to go in the game, you know what's going on. And you want support. You want support for the staff. You want support for your teammates. And you need that positive energy. And Lance is always that guy with positive energy. And when he comes in the game, we need him to knock down shots. We need him to rebound and block shots. Mark, last question. Uh, hey, Penny. Um, I'm curious, you, you, you guys always talk about positionless basketball, but obviously having a point guard is important. Um, how would you evaluate the point guard play so far for you guys? Well, with me being a point guard, you know, that played the game, the point guard spot right now is not doing well. You know, Damian is obviously playing better than Alex. And, uh, but the, the, the position itself is not flourishing. You know, it doesn't mean that their hearts are in the right, wrong place. Their hearts are in the right place. It's just, we're not getting it done. And I think that they would agree themselves. So the point guard spot right now is a struggle, but I have the utmost confidence in what we changed when we came back home and moving forward that that position is going to get better. But you talk about your uh, performance in South Dakota. Talk about your mindset and what you've uh, been able to do this week preparing for Arkansas State and Central Arkansas. Um, well, I'm just preparing for this week. I'm just trying to scratch off what we, we did in South Dakota, you know, trying to lock in and focus on winning the, the next couple of games. That's what, what's important. Terry? What's up, Boogie? What's up? Yeah, uh, you say you did a lot of hard work in the summertime and it's actually showing off, man. How does that uh, help your confidence, you know, coming out to such a great start and how you can prepare it for the rest of the season? Um, just just being able to hoop, just focusing on my confidence and knowing that there's nothing I put in the work, so there's nothing to be nervous or, or anxious about. Just just trusting my work and having confidence in playing with, with the wagon. Anthony? Boogie, what's going on? <clears throat> Am I muted? Hello? Yeah, hello. What's up? Oh, oh okay. I didn't know if I had unmuted. Uh, from last season, 
So this season, uh, what do you think the biggest improvement in your personal game has been? Um, just being able to be more dynamic. Uh, I feel like I'm shooting the ball a lot better. Um, just I just this whole summer I've been working on my overall game, being able to get to my spots and being able to score the ball and watching film to make the right pass and stuff like that. So just overall and, and my, my, the mental side of the game also has got a lot a lot better because last year I realized that basketball in college is pretty much mental. So just staying locked in and, and doing whatever it takes to help my team and just being able to score the ball. What did you learn about yourself and also about your team after the uh, road trip out west? Um, team wise, I know I learned that we weren't we weren't tough enough and we weren't together as a team and we didn't play play to play together as a team. So you know, we were focusing on on playing together, making the extra pass and stuff like that, and, and just coming together as a team. I feel like if we get this thing together and we buy in for one another, then we'll, we'll be okay. How easy are those two things to correct? Uh, it, it's it's pretty easy. You just have we just have to have, find a leader. To be honest, me me and DJ have been trying to do a, a good job of leading, talking to the guys and stuff like that. So we're we're expecting changes. We just got to stay consistent with leading. Uh, ask <clears throat> DJ. I'll ask you too. Is that something you think was missing from the team last year? Is a vocal leader from amongst the players, not just from the coaching staff. Uh, yeah, I mean, Precious did a good job. So Pre Precious was a, a, a great leader. So, I mean, we had a leader. Thank you. Jason. Hey, Boogie. Um, I get the sense that you're just more comfortable. At least, I mean, I know it's just been three games, but it seems like your, your comfort level is um, – uh, elevated this year. Would you say that's, would you say that's fair? I mean, like, do you, do you feel more comfortable out on the floor and in, in, in the role that you're in? Oh, uh, yes. I feel extremely comfortable. Just, I, I feel like the game's a lot more easier now. Everything's slowing down for me. Last year I played too fast. I feel like the game's moving, moving slow. We're moving real slow now. So everything's a lot more easier to get to my spots and, and, and make plays. Mike? Hey, Boogie, is it safe to say that you guys are um, are angry about what happened in Sioux Falls and you're excited about rolling it out there tomorrow and getting back to work because you guys didn't play the way you thought you could play in Sioux Falls? Oh, yes, I, I can say that, that, that we're, we're very angry and upset with our performances, and, and we're just ready to, to, to get it back on track and, and keep, keep this thing moving. Coach, uh, Coach talked about, he kept talking about toughness. He says, you know, we're not going to be soft and whatever I have to do. Has that been the mantra pretty much from practice yesterday? Is At practice, we've been diving on the floor, taking charges, uh, getting after it, guarding 94 feet, doing all defensive stuff. Everything that has to do with toughness, boxing out, just getting on the floor, every all, all that toughness stuff, that's all we've been doing. We haven't really been focused on no type of offense. It's been all defense and and working on grinding, grinding things out. Mark. Yeah, Boogie, um, over the course of that tournament, you, Landers, DJ, each of you at different points, you know, were able to, to have your moments offensively. I'm curious, in your mind, what's the kind of key to getting everyone playing? To You talked about coming together. What's the key to finding that chemistry, particularly among – you know, kind of the guys who, who are the top scorers on the team. Uh, just just realizing that it could be anybody's night. So so whoever's hot, whoever is making shots, we need to get them the ball. You know, putting in if if Landers is hot, he's scoring the ball. Get get him the ball. If DJ scoring the ball. Uh, get him the ball. If Lester scoring the ball, get him the ball. Whoever's hot uh, needs to have the ball. What? Why do you think? You know, it devolved. You know, Penny talked about how he thought you guys played selfish in South Dakota. Why do you think that happened then? Like, what did did anything catch you by surprise during the week in the in South Dakota? Um, I mean, I just felt like the the lights were on, so people were trying to show what they can do. I feel like 
we didn't realize that uh, winning winning games is more important, and we we're gonna win if we move the ball, and it, it just can't stick. We got to make the extra passes, and and just overall, everyone gets a touch and making making a simple play, I'm not trying to make it too too hard. Thanks, appreciate it, Fred. Hi, Boogie. Over the summer, you told me this this season, this team would be different. After the mindset, the mindset of the last like three games you had, like, what's your thoughts on the season so far? Uh, as as a team, for myself, for the whole team. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like we we haven't been focused on a, a lot of the the little things. I feel like. Coach, coach emphasizes the little things, and and us as as kids don't realize how 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 important those little things are. So I just feel like we gotta come together and really lock in on those little things, talk and communicate. I feel like the the reason why our defense w was was bad the last two games is because of communication. I feel like all that stuff that that happened was based on communication. So I, so me myself during the practice, I've been trying to like talk the whole practice like just just being annoying talking to everybody just always speaking cuz i feel like personally i play better defense when when i'm talking and communicating cuz i'm talking myself through it and i'm always alert okay mike last question hey boogie i know it's not going to be the same but uh you guys get a chance to play at the forum for the first time in a long time tomorrow just your excitement level about that about being able to play at home inside the forum you, you know how special that place can be yeah I'm very excited uh, to get get it going get it back going in the, the forum to be honest the last time we played there I don't even remember what what the last game was it's been so long so I'm very excited to play in the FedEx forum and uh, it's gonna be a lot different without fans because this is a very big arena when there's no one in there <laughs> EJ, talk about uh, practice this week and uh, what's been going on in practice and what's the overall mood in the uh, in the locker room. Um, basically, coming into practice, coach has been more based on defense. You know, just working on us pressing and, and um, working ninety four feet, more like they played in high school. So you know, he's just trying to get us to be more aggressive on defense. And you know, right now everybody's kind of excited because you know we can learn from this one and two, and we're trying to. Uh, keep winning games because we feel like we got to redeem ourselves in this tournament. So right now our, um, we're just ready to get back, ready to play tomorrow. Terry? What's up, DJ? What's up, my guy? You all right. Hey, man, uh, from a player's perspective, man, what's your emotion when you left after that third game? What, How were you feeling when you left the court after that third game? Um, Third game, you know, I was disappointed because <clears throat> I feel like we could have won that game, you know. It was times in the game that we were down like four, four or six, and you know, and then they'll get an offensive rebound. They are wanting more than us, you know, and they'll win. So you know, I was a little disappointed in us, you know, because I feel like I could did better this tournament, and you know, us as a team could have did better because you know, at times a lot of us went to um, playing individuals. So we gotta, we gotta stick to being a team, and we can't just be worried about our last names, and you know, and just trying to. Um, just trying to play for ourselves. We got to play for the team. So I, I was a little disappointed, but right now I'm happy there because we can learn from it. We can learn from our mistakes. Anthony? DJ, what's going on, man? What's up, my guy? Yeah, you got it. From last season to this season, what are you, the biggest improvement in your game? Um, I'll say I'm trying to be more of a leader. Last year, if something was bothering me, you know, I wouldn't say anything. But, like, after the game, yes, uh, at the last game, you know, I came in, I said something to the guys, you know, I was trying to get us to come together because, you know, I felt like we were separated for a little bit. But, like, you know, now I feel like I'm just becoming a better leader because I understand the game a little more than I did last year. So, you know, I'm just trying to lead guys and teach guys the right way to play the game. You know, Is so that something you think was missing from the team last year was a vocal leader amongst the players and not just uh, somebody from the coaching staff? Oh uh, yeah, of course. We was missing a leader for sure. Like we, we needed a leader because having a leader, um, like they gonna get on to everybody and make sure everybody's on point. So, you know, it, it can be more than one person that lead. So I'm trying to get everybody, you know, just somebody to support me or I support the person that's a leader, you know, we just trying to come together 
and find that leader because we do need a leader. What did you learn about yourself and also about your team after the uh, trip out west? Um, that we just gotta come out and play with that group. <laughs> like we gotta um, we gotta stay focused. We gotta stay together. You know, we can't just. Like I said, we can't just be individuals. You know, it's more than just us. If we're playing for Memphis, we're playing for um, each other. We're playing for the whole city. So we just got to stay together and, and remember that. Appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Danielle? Hey, DJ. Um, have you guys spent a lot of time these last few days looking back at, at film of the South Dakota games, or is it pretty much just all looking forward to Arkansas State? Um, we haven't been looking at any film from the last games, but like coach been on us about our toughness and um, how you feel like we wasn't the toughest team down there. So like practice just been all about toughness and all about grinding and just going hard. So that's what it's been and just looking forward, looking forward to the next games and just going out there and doing what he wants to do. Thanks, DJ. Uh, sorry, hold on before you go, Mike, last question. Hey, DJ, um, just talk about the excitement about tomorrow, you know, you being an area kid and this has been crazy. You know what it's like to be in the forum. You got hurt last year. Just the excitement level. It won't be 18,000 rooting you on, but just yep. to be able to get back inside the forum and play tomorrow. Um, for me, it's exciting because my last game in the forum was, I can't even remember, you know, this is my first game back playing in the forum. So, you know, I'm a little excited. I'm pretty sure everybody else is excited to be playing back in the FedEx forum because, our first game was in the FedEx Forum, so we come back and play in the front of limited fans. But you know, it's gonna be fun because we're at home, and um, you just gotta come out there and win and play hard. What'd you tell the new guys about what to expect about that home court advantage? Even though, like I said, it won't be full like it normally is. But what'd you mm -hmm. tell the new guys about the forum? I haven't told them nothing yet, but I'm um, probably tomorrow before we start. I'm gonna tell them something, like let them know how it is. Mm -hmm.